One thing I want to talk about is the duration of how long to take vitamin D as well as the dosage. There's a lot of confusion. Most people are taking between 600 IUs to 1,000 IUs, sometimes 2,000 IUs, and they think that that's enough. One thing you need to realize is that about 75% of the population on planet Earth are deficient in vitamin D. And vitamin D is so important. In fact, it's the most important fat-soluble vitamin, especially for the immune system. Based on some pretty credible studies, which I'm gonna list down below, and I only listed three, I'm gonna give you quite a few of them. In the first study, uh, the group took 1,000 to 2,000 IUs of vitamin D once to twice per week for one month and did not increase their vitamin D levels at all. Second study uh, took 1,000 to 2,000 IUs and it took four months to elevate their vitamin D. And in the third study, it took three months to achieve just a normal level of vitamin D by taking 1,600 IUs of vitamin D. And I just had a call from a lady on my live show who was taking 50,000 IUs of vitamin D for weeks and it did not even increase her levels. So the question is, how could you be that deficient if you're taking so much vitamin D? The first thing to know is that it takes a lot longer than you think to fix a vitamin D deficiency. It could take months. The second thing to know is that there are various things that prevent the absorption of vitamin D. One is your gut. If your gut has damaged, you're not going to be able to absorb vitamin D too well. Also, your age greatly influences your ability to absorb vitamin D, not just from dietary sources, but from the sun. The color of your skin also influences your ability to absorb vitamin D. In other words, if the skin is darker, it could take three times as much uh, sun to penetrate the skin. And then there's a the topic of how much fat you have. The more subcutaneous fat you have in your body, the less you're going to absorb vitamin D. And then there's exposure to the sun. If you're going out in the sun and you're only exposing your hands and your face to the sun, you're only exposing 5% of your body to the sun, which it would take you hours and hours and hours to even achieve uh, a small amount of vitamin D. And then you have the location where you live, the latitude, the connection between where you live and the sun. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, which if we look at United States is just above LA, and we look at the months between November and March, the amount of vitamin D you're gonna get is pretty much insignificant. And then we have metabolic issues. Let's say, for example, you have diabetes, you have arthritis, you have high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease. Guess what? The requirements for vitamin D go way, way up. And then, of course, we have the season. If it's winter and you're out there trying to get sun, the odds of you getting uh, enough vitamin D are very, very slim. And then lastly, there's a genetic uh, factor involved called polymorphism, where there is a variant or an alteration in your genes which don't allow you to absorb vitamin D very well. And a lot of people have this and they don't even know they have it, and that could be the reason why they can't absorb it. Oh, and there's one more um, that I forgot to mention. If you have a chronic infection, see the viruses that invade the body downgrade your vitamin D receptor. So if you have an infection, whether it's in the lung, in the sinuses, or in your gut, the microbes, specifically viruses, have a strategy of blocking the absorption of vitamin D. They block the receptor so you can't absorb it. It's a survival mechanism. And the white blood cells that are fighting the virus need vitamin D desperately, so they're gonna suck up that last little bit of vitamin D that you have. So as you can see, there's a lot of factors involved with the absorption of vitamin D. How much vitamin D would I recommend? 10,000 I use per day as a maintenance. And I mentioned this plus if there's an autoimmune issue involved. And you're gonna need much higher amounts of vitamin D with magnesium, B6, and zinc. And there's a couple other things that you can do. Uh, if you're concerned that this amount of vitamin D is toxic, which it's not, you would have to consume um, one to 200,000 IUs of vitamin D for months and months or years to create uh, the complications. And the biggest complication from vitamin D toxicity is hypercalcemia. That's too much calcium in the blood because that could lead to kidney stones. Uh, one way to even minimize the risk for that would be to drink 
2.5 liters of water per day. That way you avoid a super concentration of calcium in the kidney. Uh, so there won't be any calcium forming in the kidney. Another way is just to avoid calcium in supplements as well as cheese. That way there's no calcium to go into the kidney and form as a kidney stem. All right, guys, thanks for watching.